special guests and a beautiful program planned with guest speakers so we pray that you will make time to join us as we give God honor for 32 years of pastoral service here in the local church and to those of you that have your Bibles ready you may turn with me now to the Old Testament book of Jonah Jonah chapter 2 I want to look at verse number one. Jonah chapter two, verse number one. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. For just a few minutes, I want to talk about when the fish go fishing. Turn around and look at your neighbor say, when the fish, go fishing. God bless you today. The 
story of Jonah is a familiar one. Mm -hmm. From the youngest children who sing about a man swallowed by a great fish, yes. to the oldest of us who have been swallowed by wrong turns to numerous to recount. Uh -huh. We all understand the challenges of adversity. Life's tests are just that, a test. God tries us in the furnace of life. Sin is the subject. The test is to see if we will succumb to sin or we will rise above it. But before you can ace a test, you first have to admit that you are in one. The Lord told Jonah, the son of Amittai, a prophet during the reign of Jeroboam the second of Israel to go and warn the Ninevites of his impending wrath if they did not repent of their sin. Instead, Jonah, the prophet, went in the opposite direction. He got on a ship headed for Tarshish, an ancient city of Spain known for its bustling streets of wealthy merchants and eager consumers. Jonah probably hoped to get lost in the crowd, escape his duty, and drown out the voice of God in his head. Oh yeah, Jonah didn't want to face his sin. He wanted to hide it. Jonah was asleep in the bottom of the ship when a terrible storm hit. While sin is raging, we are often fast asleep, oblivious to the danger that engulfs us. We know when we are committing a sin, but sin puts us in a deep sleep. It will coax you into a deep sleep with false promises. Say, come on and take your ease. Uh, you uh, have earned it. Uh, sin says to us, uh, no one uh, will uh, ever know. Uh, it's just uh, a little uh, detour. Uh, you're not hurting uh, anybody. Uh, that's what Jonah thought uh, when he got on the boat uh, to Tarshish. Uh, that is, uh, until his sin became uh, a tempest. Uh, sin uh, will uh, whip up a storm uh, in uh, your life uh, while you uh, are unconscious uh, to uh, its peril. Uh, well, uh, let's look at what happened next. Uh, when Jonah was awakened by the ship's crew, uh, he confessed. Uh, he knew this was all uh, his fault. Uh, he knew uh, his defection was uh, deliberate. 
Uh, he didn't accidentally uh, disobey uh, God. Uh, his sin uh, was not the result uh, of negligence uh, or a lack uh, of understanding. He knew uh, exactly where he was supposed uh, to go uh, and what he was supposed uh, to do. Uh, this uh, was his doing. Jonah told them to throw him overboard. Uh, but I was surprised to read that instead uh, they tried to row uh, for sure to save themselves, uh, their cargo, uh, and Jonah. But it didn't work. Uh, sin storm uh, was too great for them uh, to navigate. Uh, they prayed uh, and asked Jonah's God uh, not to punish them uh, for his sin. And they threw Jonah in the sea. Instantly, uh, the storm uh, retreated uh, and the waters uh, were calm. It's clear this wasn't their test. It uh, was Jonah's. I was particularly intrigued by what happened uh, to the crew. Uh, Jonah's detour to Tarshish uh, turned into uh, a missionary journey. Uh, after all, uh, the seeds of faith uh, were planted uh, in an unexpectant uh, crew. The Bible says the crew uh, feared uh, the Lord uh, exceedingly uh, and offered a sacrifice uh, unto the Lord uh, and made vows. Consider this for a moment. Uh, we all want God to meet us uh, at the point uh, of our expectations. Uh, but are we willing uh, to meet God uh, at the point uh, of his uh, expectations uh, for us? It was clear that it was time for Jonah to measure up. Uh, God prepared uh, a great fish uh, to confront uh, this wayward uh, servant uh, and his sin uh, swallowed uh, him whole. Uh, then God gave Jonah three days, uh, 72 hours uh, to rethink uh, his uh, decision. Uh, oh, what happens uh, when the sin you thought uh, was your choice uh, to make uh, turns uh, on you. When like Jonah, you willingly pay the fare for sin uh, when all those promises uh, of fun uh, through folly and rebellion uh, turn into a storm uh, to be to handle. What happens when you don't hook the fish, but the fish hooks you? What happens uh, when the tables are turned uh, on the fishers of men and the fish go fishing? Well, when the fish go fishing, Helplessness draws us to God. Turn around and look at somebody. Say, helplessness draws us to God. Come on and put your hands together. Let those people out there know that you're in here giving God some praise. In our natural state, we are oblivious to the power of God. We randomly prescribe our own medicine. We absorb ourselves in business and struggle up the path of ambition. We 
plunge into crazy indulgences and run breathless from sensation to sensation. We seek rest and satisfaction, but find none. And we get to the point where we start to feel helpless. That's because the human heart belongs to God. Your heart wants the knowledge of God. The society of God, the approval of God, the internal manifestation of God, and a conscience enlightened by His presence. Yes. We want to receive His fullness, we want to be strong in his might. We want to rest in his love. We want to be surrounded by his everlasting glory. Up till now, Jonah had forgotten. He was on the run, headed for Sin City. But angry Omnipotence cannot and will not be denied. God took measures that even Jonah could not ignore. It was Jonah's helplessness in the belly of the fish that reminded him of the source of his salvation. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, God uh, is the only real need uh, of the human heart. Uh, Acts 17 and 28 says, uh, for in him uh, we live uh, and move uh, and have uh, our being. Jonah's flesh and heart uh, failed in its resistance uh, to God. Jonah had no choice but to come back to the first principle of faith. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Then when the fish go fishing, it's prayer time. Turn around, look at somebody, say it's prayer time. Our scripture text says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. And he recorded his confession of guilt in chapter 2. Oh, trouble, affliction has a way of opening the mouth of the sinner. You keep praying. Keep your mouth closed. And let God send some trouble the sinner's way. And he'll learn how to open his mouth. God declared through Hosea, in their affliction will they seek me early. God can pierce the armor of any sinner and cause him to repent. The invasion of fiery serpents did it for an incorrigible Hebrew nation. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned. The bonds of slavery did it for Manasseh. Second Chronicles 13, 12 says, And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed. Uh, the death of Bathsheba's child uh, did it for David. Uh, David 
David said unto Nahum, I have sinned against the Lord. The Babylonian exile did it for Israel. Isaiah wrote, they poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. And it was the fish fastened by God. The prophet uh, who would not surrender sooner uh, now uh, found resistance uh, out uh, of the question. Uh, God uh, was now uh, in control. God's judgment had softened Jonah's stubbornly sealed lips. The severity of the affliction, of the affliction uh, conjoined uh, with the grace of God uh, forced Jonah to retreat uh, to the only safety uh, that he knew, uh, the arms uh, of God. Jonah said, uh, when my soul fainted within me, uh, I remembered uh, the Lord uh, and my prayer came in uh, unto thee. Uh, in Jonah's afflicted state, uh, he remembered. Uh, oh, trouble uh, will make you remember. Uh, he remembered uh, how to pray, uh, what to say, uh, and who uh, to say it to. Uh, in his state uh, of desperation, uh, the prophet Jonah uh, was able to recall the psalms of prayer uh, and praise uh, that he knew uh, so well. Uh, he cried out, uh, I will sacrifice uh, unto thee uh, with the voice uh, of thanksgiving. Uh, I will pay uh, that uh, I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Oh, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, spiritual recall uh, happens uh, when a desperate sinner uh, seeks to reconnect uh, with uh, his creator. Uh, you remember uh, what can wash uh, away uh, your sin. Uh, you remember uh, who can lift uh, you uh, from the gutter. Uh, you remember uh, who can cleanse you uh, from all uh, corruption. Uh, you remember uh, who can free you uh, from the bondage uh, and make you whole uh, again. If you uh, let the word of Christ uh, Jonah prayed. This is the paradoxical way of faith. When you pray, you can triumph over common sense and reverse sin's direct verdict because when you pray, you pour out your confession to possess the theoretically impossible solution, which is redemption. However, there is one important fishing tip that we must explore. When the fish go fishing, divine deliverance arise. But only when the sinner is ripe to receive it. Uh, turn around and look at your neighbor and say, are you ready to receive it? Uh, put your hands together, church. Uh, I'm going home uh, when I tell you. When man forsakes God, uh, God uh, who is infinite uh, in mercy uh, does not forsake uh, man. Uh, 
Yeah, let me say that again. When man forsakes God, God, who is infinite in mercy, does not forsake man. If Jonah's disobedient voyage would have taken him safely into Tarshish, he would have only been remembered as a disobedient prophet. But God deals mercifully with us. God wants us to do what he expects of us. So God takes several steps to rescue us from our sin. First, he sends a tempest to arouse us out of sin's lethargy. Then he brings us face to face with our sin. Finally, he provides us with a means of escape and offers us a new commission as his redeemed servants. Oh, I wish y'all would help me preach this. Well, none of this happens until the sinner is right to receive it uh, any sooner uh, would be uh, too soon. Uh, God's grace uh, never works uh, against his uh, wisdom. Uh, Jonah uh, was not vomited uh, on dry land uh, before he was uh, converted. Uh, grace uh, stood by uh, while God's wisdom was at work. If a whale of a sin has swallowed you up, see to your repentance and God will see to your relief. He will come to your rescue when you spiritually reconnect to his plan for your life. Well, uh, in a silver refinery, uh, the molten metal uh, becomes still uh, and bright. Uh, when it is completely uh, refined uh, and the refiner uh, can see his image uh, in the glassy uh, surface, uh, the heat uh, has to remain intense uh, until the transition is complete. God is our refiner. We are tried in the furnace of life until he can see his image reflected in us. Thus Malachi wrote and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Well, I got to leave you now, but Jonah is not unique. We've all been there. The Lord has led us all out of life's tempest. Think of a time when your father pulled you out just in the nick of time. The belly of hell you were in turned into the gates of heaven. Your house of despair changed into hallelujahs of delight when the fish went fishing in your life. God plucked you out of the muck and mire. God cleansed your defiled hands. God washed your polluted desires. Sin made you sick, but your God rescued you from the ulcer of lust, the virus of jealousy, the gangrene of greed, the headache of high hatred, the plague of depression, the tumor of self-righteousness. 
this. And when your soul touched the shores of safety and rested in his arms, you could finally say, he restored my soul. He restored my soul. He restored my soul. He restored my soul. God did it. churchontherockbaptist.com Send me a note. Let me know that you've made that decision for Jesus. And we'll begin to pray for you here and wherever you are. We'll ask God to help you find a good, strong, Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church. Thank you for tuning in today. It's offering time now here at Church on the Rock. 
And we pray that you have been blessed by this presentation, by our morning worship services. We'd like to allow you to be able to participate, for you know that worship is not done until we've given an offering to the Lord. We've made it very easy for you to be able to give to Church on the Rock through your financial apps of PayPal, Zelle Pay, and Cash App. All you have to do is dial our phone number in the information there on the app. Our phone number here is 408-532-7625. If you're on Facebook Live, you can Press the app button at the top. It will take you directly to uh, uh, PayPal. Uh, also, we're on the Givelify app. You can search for us at Church on the Rock Baptist. Uh, you'll see a picture of the sanctuary behind me. You can give that way. You may go to our website at churchontherockbaptist.com. Follow the instructions of giving that way. And you may also mail your gift to Church on the Rock. Post Office Box 730-341, San Jose, California, 95173. We pray that you've enjoyed these services. Send us an email or on the screen there if you would like to be added to our prayer list here in California. We are praying for you night and day, and we pray that God will bless you in every way. Well, until next time, don't forget, next Sunday is a very special day in the life of the church as we honor Pastor Moore for 32 years of consistent service here in the Silicon Valley. We pray that you'll join us as we'll have guest speakers and a guest preacher and we give God praise for consistency in this part of his vineyard. Join us next Sunday. Share, like, tell somebody. They're doing it in San Jose. Uh, until next time, uh, stay on the battlefield uh, for the Lord. Uh, I am on the battlefield for my Lord.